What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review? Today we're looking at the Aaron Saturns cask. Stick around. So we're back with another Aaron today. I believe this is my 4,000th review of an Aaron on this channel. I'm a big fan of the brand. Even though they don't win me over with every bottle, uh, I love their house style and I like their overall craft approach to making whiskey. Uh, the one we've got today is going to be their Sauternes cask. This is part of their wine finish series. That line also includes a port cask finish which I recently reviewed on the channel and you have an Amarone finish in there too. That's one I haven't touched on just yet but I'm sure I'll get around to it eventually. Uh, all of these whiskeys are going to give us an above average ABV which means we can expect some pretty full, pretty intense flavors from them. Uh, these are also all no age stated whiskeys and personally speaking these no age stated errands are not my favorite i think Aaron does its best work with age statements anyway back to our whiskey here this one's been finished in sauternes casts uh, sauternes is a sweet wine from france and it's notable for using grapes that are infected with a special kind of fungus that's known as noble rot now this noble rot is used in the production of several different dessert wines what it does is it concentrates the, the sugars inside a grape, giving us a much sweeter, denser character. Now, personally speaking, Sauternes finished whiskeys are not my favorite style of whiskey, although I have had a few good ones, but a lot of people out there do tend to like them just because they have a lighter, less dramatic influence than a lot of other finishes do. Um, what they do is they tend to add an extra layer of sweetness and fruitiness to the whiskey without overwhelming its base flavors. Now, Aaron revamped their core range a couple years back, and when they did that, I'm not sure if they made any changes to our Sauternes cask finish here. Um, but for the sake of today's video, I am going to assume that they did simply because they made changes to the majority of their core range. Uh, but yeah, don't hold me to that. Now, I did have the old version of this whiskey, but this is the first bottle that I've tried since the revamp. Um, for the old one, I liked it. I thought it was very pleasant, very drinkable, but I also thought it was kind of forgettable. It wasn't particularly interesting, at least for me. Um, so why don't we find out about this new bottle? Why don't we hop into a review here, see what this whiskey is all about, and in the meantime, if you can kindly leave a like down below, that would be greatly appreciated. As you may have guessed, we got some pretty decent specs here. Our ABV on this one comes in at 50%. It is of course going to be a non-chill filtered expression, and our color is natural. So no complaints. So you can check out our natural color here. Um, great looking bottle. I always love these Aaron bottles. This one's no different. However, I'm not a huge fan of the yellow color scheme on this one. So probably going to knock a point off for that just because it's a little bit less aesthetic in my opinion. Uh, very minor quibble and I still do like the look of this stuff. So presentation score here is going to be 4 out of 5. As always, we've got all the info we need on the label. The only thing that's missing here is an age statement. Is this 4, 5, 6, 7 years old? We don't know. but. You know, whiskey drinkers are getting more sophisticated these days, and I think if they see a younger whiskey, they're more likely to applaud you for your transparency than to snicker about how young the whiskey is. So, you know, Aaron, you're known for your transparency. Why not go all in? Why not be bold? Give us a number right here on the label, even if it's a smaller number. I bet it pays off. It did for Ardbeg. Let's try the nose. So we have these fresh, very yellow, uh, semi-sweet fruits in here. I'm getting golden delicious apples, bananas, pears, some lemon zest. We have grains in here, we have honey nut oats, we have vanilla, some grapes, more like raisins, sultanas, and we have a touch of malt in this. We also got a little bit of oak in here, it's kind of drying actually. Now the palate. Mm. It's nice. Um, I'm getting white pepper. I'm getting malt. Loads of honey in this. Um, there are some sultanas, some white grapes in here, some papaya, and some oak. Now the finish. Mm. Uh, we're getting more malt in here. We have honey, syrup, pears. Uh, we have some sultanas in here, some oak and some overripe yellow fruits. Our finish is medium in length. So this whiskey is basically what you think it's gonna be. If you're familiar with the Aaron House style, if you're familiar with Sauternes finished whiskeys, then this one isn't gonna have many surprises in store for you. It's pretty much what you would imagine it to be. 
Uh, that being said, it is very pleasant. You have some really nice sweet notes in here and some decent complexity. Of course, our Aran base malt here is as clean and as structured as ever. And on top of that, we have those fruity yellow notes and that honey note. Like I said, I do enjoy the sweetness in this whiskey. It's very restrained. It's sweet, but it's measured. We never have a full on like syrupy saccharin character, which of course is a good thing. So we have a decent finish here. It's not super intense. And I actually think the finish on this whiskey is better integrated with the distillery character than what you'll find in the rest of the wine finish series. So we do have a whiskey of good quality here. However, uh, I will say that I find the overall experience to be somewhat uneventful. Now, I recently had this whiskey in a side-by-side -side with Glenmorangie's A Tale of Cake. Uh, why did I do that? Well, A Tale of Cake has been finished in Tokai wine casks. Tokai, like Sauternes, is a sweet dessert wine, and it's made using those grapes that have that noble rot infestation. So the character between Sauternes and Tokai is often compared, um, and while I know that Glenmorangie, A Tale of Cake, and Aaron Sauternes are in a different price category, uh, I still found the Glenmorangie to be a much better whiskey. Anyway, my score here is going to be 83. It's a nice one, but honestly, it's not super interesting. Uh, as is often the case with Sauternes wine finishes, we get some nice flavors in there. It adds some nice touches, but overall, it's nothing outstanding. Um, luckily, I'm okay with that, though, because this is still an Aran whiskey, and regardless of what finish you put on top of an Aran, that base malt, those base flavors that you get from the distillery are always beautiful. In fact, the Aran-ness of this whiskey is probably my favorite thing about it. Uh, our finish in here is nice, we got some nice notes, it's very well integrated, it's very pleasant, but that's about it for me. Uh, the thing about Aaron though is that even with their lesser whiskies, their house style is so good that we're almost always guaranteed a certain baseline of quality. And I do feel like that's the case with this one, so it is still a nice whiskey. Uh, if you want to compare this one to the port finish, I would say I like them about the same, but I think this one is better quality. I think we have more layers to it. It's more integrated with the base flavors. Um, I think there's just a little bit more to it than your port. The port is much simpler. That being said, I like the wine flavors from the port a little bit more than I like the flavors that we're getting from the Sauternes. So basically a trade-off. I can see why people score this higher though. This is not my style, but it's very well made. Anyway, neither the Sauternes or the port really blew me away. They were both decent, they were pleasant sippers, but ultimately, kind of forgettable. Um, I think I like Aaron best when it's either a bare bones presentation or done with a more dramatic wine finish, provided that wine finish is well integrated, which I don't think it is with the port. This one is kind of in between those things, and as I said, it's not really my style, but if you are generally a fan of Sauternes finished whiskeys, I think this one will work for you. It is decent. I think our value is okay here. It comes in at the high end of entry level. Uh, personally, I might knock a few dollars or pounds off the price, but that's probably just me being tough on this whiskey because as I said, it's not really my cup of tea. But if this style suits you, I think you will find it worth the money. Not only that, you gotta love our 50% ABV on this one, which is always appreciated. It adds a nice intensity to our flavors. Um, but yeah, as I said in the past, Aaron's at its best when it has an age statement. That's true of the old line with her. 12 cast strength with the old 14, and it's true of the new line with the 10 and the 18. So if you want the best of Aaron, skip the wine finish series and go straight to the age statements. Not only that, the 10 is going to be cheaper than this stuff. Alright, that's it for me today guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and of course smash the like. Now I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Aaron Sauternes finish here? What were your thoughts on it? And finally, down in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye guys.